in the School of Education at La Trobe University, Australia. She earned her PhD from the Faculty of Education, Monash University, and worked as Teaching and Research Associate at Monash from 2018 to 2022. She has taught English as second and foreign language in Australia at universities and English language centers for over 15 years. Her areas of research interest include the politics of English, indigenous education, diasporic communities, citizenship studies, and social justice. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Urmi Chakma, speaking about learning English as a third language, challenges of a linguistic minority speaker in Bangladesh. Um, thank you, Arifa, for the nice introduction. Um, yes, I'm, I look forward to seeing you and meeting you um, pretty soon. Uh, hopefully, and at the end of this year, I'm planning to visit uh, Bangladesh. Um, also, I would like to, um, you know, say thank you, a big thank you to um, Amin Bhai, as Rakib said, um, and, and um, you know, described how or Amin Bhai's works and what he does for, uh, for Bangladesh um, and for us. So thank you, um, the organizers of the EPIB3 conference for inviting me to present and share my experiences of learning English um, as a third language. And this is my first participation in the, in the conference. Um, so today, uh, this is a picture of me, by the way, with my twin daughters wearing uh, Chakma traditional clothes, Pinon Hadi, uh, as many of you might know. Right, so we are going to look at some of the things today. Um, I will share my story growing up in the interface of three languages. Um, and we'll have a look at the divides between ESL and EFL and learning English as a third language, um, as, a, as, a, as a Chakma minority, and the paradigm shift towards English education in the West and how it contrasts in some ways teaching English in Bangladesh and also some implications and takeaway points that I would like to share. Now, um, growing up as, as a Chakma, um, you know, minority Chakma indigenous person, I have uh, experienced a number of challenges. I started learning Bangla or Bengali when I started going to school um, in a small town in Kagrachuri from the Chittagong Hills, Mohajanpara, it was called. Um, but even before I started learning English, I had already encountered a number of challenges, you know, learning Bangla, as I'm going to share. Challenges that were mostly invisible to my English teachers. So um, when I started my, um, you know, formal education in grade one, um, I saw limited to no representation of my culture. And it was really hard to, you know, uh, see how uh, I would become very fluent or how I, my pronunciation would be, you know, perfect in, in, in Bangla. Now, I, I used to uh, mispronounce certain words and letters. For example, in, in Chakma, we don't really have the strong T sound. For example, Taka. Uh, in, in, in Chakma, we use the to sound, like tal, you know, um, tumi. So the ta sound was really difficult for me to learn. Um, so, you know, you, we almost remember some of the very early memories of learning something. To me, the word bharta, for example, um, is quite uh, difficult to pronounce because I remember in grade one or two, I was trying to understand the difference between the T and the T. So I told, I was, uh, my, my friends asked me, so what did you um, eat for breakfast in the morning? I would eat rice as chakmas do. Uh, we eat rice three times. And I was saying, alu bhatta, because I couldn't see the T. I, I was just trying to identify, uh, see the differences. And my friends just laughed so much. And uh, the word bhatta, I think I avoided pronouncing her word for a very long time because it would give me you know, creeps. Uh, I can't pronounce the words. Um, so 
I would often be teased and sometimes ridiculed because of my pronunciation. For example, um, I know that it's quite cold in Bangladesh right now. Um, the sound SH, shit, it doesn't really exist in Chakma. Uh, Cho, uh, KT, Gieti. Now I can because after so many years of trying, and I often um, you know, get this compliment of, oh, your, your, English, your Bangla is perfect. I don't really take pride in that, honestly, but I do get that um, appreciation or praise. So um, I I doubted my um, Bangla pronunciation, uh, my abilities of speaking Bangla properly. Um, so when it came to learning English, learning both L, um, Bangla and English at the same time was really, really confusing to me. Um, it was, you know, a cognitive overload for me. And, and because it was mainly about um, translating from Bangla to English, no chakma um, and um, cognitive overload. And because of that, I had very um, limited motivation. And because I couldn't really connect what I was learning uh, to my first language, chakma. Um, now, I just wanted to share this story with you. I think it was published about a week ago. Um, so when I was preparing the slides, as you can see, just four days ago. Um, from the title, you can see Nigerian schools flogged for speaking my mother tongue. It is incredible that it is still, still happening um, in some parts of the world. Um, so the young man here, Kareem um, Habibullah, I think his name was, when I was reading the, um, the interview and the article, his mother tongue is Yoruba. Um, when he was a secondary school student, his teacher asked him a question, and this is how he said, I, I know the answer, but I can only respond with my mother language. Um, and um, he was flogged because he couldn't, he couldn't answer the question in English. Now, I was not flogged, uh, I but I was not allowed to speak my mother tongue in class. Um, I know that the situation has changed quite a bit in Bangladesh, but I, I, we still have a long way to go. Um, right, so I, I will just share um, a little bit the division of um, EFL and ESL. Uh, so when you think about English, as Rakib mentioned, um, educators um, in many countries and particularly in Bangladesh um, usually divide if um, between these two, EFL and ESL. So if, if English is taught in a country where the main language is English, um, such as Australia, um, it's ESL, English as a second language. But if English is taught in a country where it's not the main language, it's EFL, like in Bangladesh. This is usually the way teaching of English is constructed. So either as a foreign or a second language. However, as you know, in my case, English is not a second language. It's my third language. Then of course, when we say ESL, it doesn't necessarily mean the second language. It simply means language other than your first language. Then again, if it's other than your first language, it might as well be EFL. And therefore, in Australia, instead of ESL, we call it EAL, English as an additional language, which is more um, inclusive. Now, I'll just put this all together. Generally, in Australia and in the West, um, when it comes to English education, there has been a paradigm shift towards inclusivity and diversity. And that's why instead of ESL, we call it EAL, English as an additional language. Now, um, you know, uh, in Australia, we have um, so many immigrants and I'm sure if you ask Amin Bhai there, Amin Bhai will be able to tell you how many, um, how many languages are spoken in Australia, how many people from you know, so many different countries have immigrated and immigrating every year to Australia. So even in political discourses, immigrants used to be in the past labeled according to their language background as l boat language background other than English. But that is, now, um, that is not how they are referred to uh, right now by the politicians. Now they use newly arrived uh, without referring to their language 
uh, background. So just to be more inclusive, just to, not to mention, you know, uh, or pointing out where they come from. Now, heritage language refers to mother tongue for immigrants outside of their uh, own countries, for example, uh, Sudanese immigrants in Australia or Bangladeshi immigrants um, in Australia, which is also called community language because heritage language denotes or connotes something old, ancient, not modern, historical. So it's kind of negative. That's why we use the term community language. Now, EIL, English as an International Language, um, which is a movement against uh, the standardized forms of English, uh, like Rocky mentioned, um, you know, US English, uh, British English, Canadian, Australian English, um, has gained more prominence, particularly in um, research and teaching. So we use EIL. Um, what about me? What about my first language then? So in the previous slides, all of these things together show that we are moving towards more inclusivity and diversity in Australia and in other parts of the world, and in Bangladesh too, to some extent. But it's not really um, you know, clearly or highly reflected in English education in Bangladesh, where we still strive for um, standardization, we still strive to sound like a British person or an American person, no, or uh, American speaker uh, or, or a British speaker, not so much Australian um, speaker uh, uh, because of the reasons that um, Rocky mentioned. So in all of this, when someone like me learns English as L3, as a third language, where is the place of my first language? Because Bangla is not my first language. Um, so this is just to contextualize what I, what I mean by learning English as, uh, as a third language. So in Bangladesh, I guess we have to see that uh, on one hand, um, there is inclusivity and diversity. On the other hand, there is also a persistence of standardized varieties of English trying to be, um, you know, sounding like native speaker when we think about pronunciation. Um, and my first language, which is Chakma, uh, gets lost in all of this because it's neither my first or uh, either, it, neither my, it's not my second or, sorry, it's not my, uh, it's not reflected in the textbooks or in the policies. Um, so in other words, if we look at uh, language education in Bangladesh, uh, it's taught as a foreign language across primary and secondary education, at, uh, but ethnic minority, indigenous minority students learn English as a third language and their first language is heritage language and community language is absent um, after primary, after pre-primary. Now, if we uh, look at some statistics to contextualize how Chakma language looks like, looks like in Bangladesh, um, as you can see, uh, the so-called tribal, I have a big problem with the word uh, as a researcher, as someone who completed PhD last year after, you know, you know what it takes to do a PhD. Um, but the tribal people constitute just over 1%. It's so negligible that their first language education or their hated language or community language is not a big issue in Bangladesh. Although I have to say that, as I was saying, that the government has taken some steps to include mother tongue education for some indigenous communities in Bangladesh. As far as I'm cons I, I remember, and I know it's five um, languages in primary and pre-primary education. Now, um, Further breaking down, within that 1.1% of the Chakma, um, I mean, of, of the minority uh, language edu um, percentage, Chakma constitute the majority, 46%, and then Marma, 29, uh, uh, Tripura, 13%, and the rest. Um, if we look at the bigger picture of languages in Bangladesh, this is um, how it looks like how many languages are spoken in Bangladesh. There are 39 ethnic languages in Bangladesh, uh, according to Wikipedia. So um, if you look at here at the top, Indo-European, um, Austro-Asiatic, Sino-Tibetan, Dravidian, and so and so, 
Um, some of these languages have different origins um, and they're structurally, mechanically, grammatically, um, syntactically very different from Bengali. So just because you have um, you know, grow, uh, you have you have grown up in Bangladesh. If Bengali or Bangla is not your first language, because of your first language, your mother tongue, uh, whether it's Chakma or Tripura or, or other or Marma, you might have significant problems in pronunciation. And on top of that, if you're learning a second foreign language, and for me it was English, um, imagine how much more difficult it might be. Now, I wanted to just ask you, if I were there, I would have asked you this question. How many of you have actually seen this map? Because um, in Bangladesh, I, I don't think we see the linguistic map, uh, map very, um, you know, uh, it's not a common to see. We usually see the map in terms of resources and administrative um, centers or the developments or what we have achieved and so and so. Just think about it, the language, languages that are spoken in Bangladesh. So it's not, it's not really only, of course, not only Bengali or Bangla. Um, now, to get back to where I started, I would like to share this quote. So according to um, Tollefsen, language policies are mechanisms for creating and sustaining systems of inequality that benefit wealthy and powerful individ individuals and groups, institutions and nation states. Now, a lot of this is politicized, how languages work, what values we attach to them, how important they are perceived to be in a country's economy, social functioning, um, and you know, related to other things. So a lot of that is political. And having been born in Bangladesh and as a language minority speaker, I have experienced all of that. Um, no, this is something that I thought it's it's really interesting to see how um, you know certain things are homogenized. Now, this is a recent article that I've come across, as you can see from the title, Africa is not a country. Um, Africa, uh, because a lot of people actually think that Africa is one country. It's actually one of the most diverse and um, complex regions uh, regions on the planet. To show the extent of which um, Africa is homogenized by so many people is reflected in the number of books that came up um, over the years to demystify that Africa is not a country. So let's have a look. So for example, this is a book, another, another, another so if we go back to saying africa is not a country africa is not a country so um just imagine how many people think africa is a country now it's so big it's so diverse it's so multicultural that a lot of countries would be able to fit in africa so that's how uh you know africa is uh, homogenized um now, this is the view of the West, the way we think about languages, um, whether we like it, not, or, or like it or not, um, how we think about languages, um, it, you know, all these ideas and policies are predominantly shaped in the West, which includes Australia. And therefore, if we think about Bangladesh, it's just about the Bengalis, the Bangla speakers. English is positioned against Bangla. Um, another quote where you can see, I I'm not going to read the whole quote. I just wanted to say that we need to be aware that people blame it on the language, but act actually it's the politics that are behind such additional problems for minorities. Now, um, in the quote, it says concern themselves with issues of poverty, unemployment, the racial discrimination, and so and so. So when um, we as educators, as teachers, teaching English to uh, minority um, speakers, um, uh, language learners, uh, such as you know the uh, the language learners in the Chittagong Hill Tracks or the Chakmas who are perhaps learning or studying in Dhaka or in other uh, uh, big. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, you could you please kindly wrap it up? We have another speaker. 
Sure, sure, thank sure, you. sure. I'm nearly done, actually. Thank you. Um, so just remember, please, that the socioeconomic conditions is different for Chakma or the other students. Therefore, teachers should not homogenize them with Bengali learners when teaching them English. Um, now, this is just some stats. I'm not going to give you, um, you know, uh, all the information, but I just wanted to show that we know how multicultural or bilingualism, multilingualism is um, accepted and, um, you know, learned in Australia. And to learn from, um, you know, um, Australia, Bangladesh can do, uh, Bangladesh also can learn from all the statistics and from Australia. Uh, now, in Bangladesh, um, I would say um, predominantly we can we see that some of the assimilationist policies, and this is where where Rukib said as well, um, you know, the L one and L two, uh, where he gave an example of the uh, Miles children who lose their first language, and I think in many ways it's happening. Um, in in, in 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 Bangladesh as well for the Chakma. So you can see, you can understand uh, this part. I'll just wrap up because I don't have much time. Um, so the takeaway points from what I um from what I'm been talking about is would be um that we are where while we are having this conference about pronunciation, different aspects of teaching and learning about English pronunciation in Bangladesh. Um, you know, just think about the other languages because subtractive bilingualism will ultimately, uh, you know, take away their first language. So we can use, um, I don't, I, I'll just reiterate, as Rakeep said, intelligibility is more important than standardized accent. Um, like me, motivation and interest, I think will take you a very long way, actively listen um, to, you know, uh, and learn to pronounce certain sounds. I'm not going there but also don't be self-conscious. Um, this is what I will tell my students. Um, I still make a lot of mistakes as um, my English is my third language. As you can hear, you probably have heard, but that's absolutely fine. So what I, I would like to um, encourage the educators here is that please try to use the top message, um, you know, learner's first language, um, because it's the greatest pedagogical tool that a learner can bring in the classroom. Use their, use their first language as a resource uh, to teach. And, um, and pronunciation in English can be challenging, as you can see, um, just like a word, um, the, the letter G in the last quote of my presentation, that G is pronounced in so many different ways. G in girl, F in rough, J in gel or silent, um, or silent in um, sign, or the L in almond and so and so. So thank you everyone. Um, thank you for the invite. If you, if you want to know more or uh, keep in touch with me, please send me a message or email. Thank you. Um, Professor Mohammed uh, Monir Zaman will now deliver his plenary speech on English pronunciation of uh, Bengali speaking persons, exploring typical and atypical attributes. Uh, may I request Dr. Faimas and Shahid, Director, CLS, uh, to introduce this speaker. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it's really my pleasure to actually introduce Professor Dr. Monir Zaman. We have been personally in touch since long. So I, I keep on calling him Munir Zaman Bhai. He is a very prominent figure in our ELT arena in our country since long. So welcome Munir Bhai, Munir Zaman Bhai here. So let me introduce him as per protocol. Professor Dr. M. Munir Zaman is a professor of English at Jahanginagar University, Bangladesh and global professional member of TESOL International Association. He obtained his MA in English language and PhD in applied linguistics and ELT from the University of Dhaka. He completed e-teacher methodology for TESOL at the University of Maryland, e-teacher assessment at the University of Oregon, e-teacher educational technology at Iowa State University, and ELTL MCB offered by TESOL International Association. 
and attended PWD 2013 at the University of Oregon, USA. His core interests cover TESOL methodology, curriculum and syllabus design, materials development, assessment and testing, educational technology, second language teacher education, ELT leadership and management, and literatures in English. He has 29 years of experience in teaching and research and has a large number of indexed international publications, including research papers, translations, book reviews, book chapters, and books. And some of his very recent publications are The Post Method Pedagogy, Critical Reviews and Contextual Reflections. The Post Method Pedagogy, Issues of Learning and Teaching. English Phonetics and Phonology, a blended learning design plan. Technology in teaching ESL, EFL, integration, application, tools and resources. New trends and digital adoption, a paradigm shift in higher education. Teachers' narratives from initial virtual classrooms and professional development during the COVID-19 pandemic. So, Apart from all these things, he is very busy and he, he is also involved in a very uh, promising journal. He is uh, deeply engaged with that and he is actually bringing up the young ELT professionals, encouraging them to come up with publications and research. So, uh, Dr. Mon Mohamed Munirzawan, would you please come up and come up with your presentation? Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Fahim. Uh, here, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me. I really feel honored. My special thanks must go to Amin Bhai. He has been uh, doing a lot for improving English pronunciation of Bangladeshi people. I am really proud of Mr. Amin Bhai. I appreciate his endeavors. And here we have got uh, Professor Hamid Rahman Sir, ETAP President, Mr. Masum Billah Bhai, and many other respected learned colleagues. Uh, some ULEP students, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum, Namaskar, good morning. Today, uh, my, you know, you see here the presentation title English pronunciation of Bengali speaking persons. Exploring typical and typical attributes. Okay, just uh, can I use the navigator? Any problem with the slides? Okay, uh, yes, sometimes technology doesn't want to help us smoothly. Okay. Anyway, yeah, you see the speaker is speaking and the listener is showing this reaction and action as well. Anyway, as we were uh, just uh, listening to the previous speaker, 
She's, uh, she was a junior to me in the Department of English at the University of Dhaka. And yeah, uh, uh, the department chair, uh, the English department chair at ULAB, uh, Ms. Arifa Gani. I'm really proud of her. My uh, thanks must go to her. And she was my, my junior in the Department of English. And Rakib was my junior too. All the people, excluding Hamidram Sar and others, were junior to me. So I'm an aged person. Uh, I'm fast growing old, but I'm not cold, though it's winter. So my presentation goal and objectives. Uh, today, my focus is on English pronunciation of Bengali speaking persons. Yeah, actually pronunciation covers a lot of things, including articulation, and other things and my focus is on articulation and more specifically i'm here zeroing in on two things number one typical features sorry let me drink some water i've got a bottle with me okay uh, specifically, uh, today I'm concentrating on uh, two things. Number one, the common features in the pronunciation of Bengali speaking persons. And number two, some unusual features in the pronunciations of Bengali speaking persons. And as uh, I guess, we are all Bengali speaking. So we know the common features in our pronunciation of English words and utterances. I mean, isolated words or stray words and connected words. As we are listening to the previous presenter, English is also my third language. English is not my first language. My first language is the Bangla of my medicine. And my second language is standard or standardized Bangla or Prometo Bangla. For example, I soon born. Hi Bain. It's my mother tongue. And my second language is Eshachan Moshen. It's my second language. And my third language is English. So I am also like a tribal person or indigenous person. As the previous person's first language was Chakma, Bangla was the second one, and English was the third one. The same things happened to me. And what do you think? What's your first language? You, would you? Can I know your name? What's your first language? Anyway, no problem. But here in Bangladesh, if we listen to 10 persons speaking in English, we will hear 10 different types of accents. A person from Borishal speaks in Borishal accent. A person from Noakhadi and Masumbai is from Borishal. Mogobari Borishal. Mogoborishal, Isn't it? And you are from Shatkira, you speak English in Shatkira accent. So, accent isn't important for us so discard it okay 
we did pronunciation. When we are speaking English or in English, our pronunciation has to be intelligible, comprehensible, and interpretable. When we are speaking to people, they should they should they, they should be helped to understand what we are conveying, what, what we are saying, what intention we have. Okay. But here we see that in Bangladeshi people's uh, pronunciation, we find some typical features. I've studied actually when we pronounce English words utterances, we basically pronounce segmentals and suprasegmentals. Segmentals are combined to produce syllables, words, or connected words, and suprasegmentals. Yeah, one point I should clarify our mother tongue, in broadly speaking, is Bangla, but Bangla is a syllable timed language. It's a type of when we speak Bangla, we usually use the level tone. We don't put stress on certain syllables. But English is a quite different language. It's a stress timed language. When we pronounce even a single word of more than one syllable, we have to stress one syllable and we have to leave the other syllable unstressed. For example, English, it has two syllables. We put stress on the first syllable and the second syllable is unstressed. But Bangladeshi people usually pronounce English, but it's not English. In Bangla, it's English. problem. But in English, it's English. Okay. Anyway, so when I'm discussing the common features of Bengali speaking person's English pronunciation, I'm concentrating on uh, segmentals and supersegmentals. You know, segmentals basically include 12 monotones, 8 diphthongs, and 20 consonants. On the other hand, suprasegmentals include basically junking, stress, stress, timing, tone, and intonation. Yeah, I have got a lot of larded persons, so sometimes I feel nervous and my throat uh, goes dry and I have to drink water frequently. Please don't take that otherwise, no problem. Okay. Here you see, actually, when there are many different varieties of English, as we have already heard from the previous speaker, Australian English, American English, Nigerian English, American, uh, British English. In Britain, you, Great Britain, you will have a lot of different accents. Um, as is the case for our mother tongue. Okay. Bangla is spoken, is used in many different ways, in many different reasons. But when we are learning English language, we have to have a standard model before us. And here in Bangladesh, we have a very long colonial history, as well as its very strong, intense impact. So we usually use standard British pronunciation. That's called RP, Received Pronunciation, or BBC English, or King, King's English. Now, uh, there is a King for the UK. And before it was Queen's English, right? And 
American English, gender American English is also important because America is a very powerful country. It has a lot of money, a lot of arms and weapons. All right. So we sometimes uh, try to learn that language. In Bangladesh, we see that in uh, many uh, English medium schools, American pronunciation is referred to RP. Okay. But that's why I have taken here two major varieties. Number one, RP, and number two, standard American pronunciation. And here I have just pointed out the deviations uh, from the norms, including RP and standard American pronunciation. In both RP and American pronunciation, uh, we see monophthongs are of different types. Especially, we get some long monophthongs and short monophthongs. In English, the beauty of English is that short is pronounced long, but long is pronounced short, is the beauty of English. But we Bengali speaking persons usually fail to enjoy the beauty, so which don't usually differentiate between long and short vowels. It's our almost uh, common feature. For example, you see here all the things I have shown the monotones. For example, L I P lip. L E A P lip. We pronounce it the same way. We don't differentiate between the long and short vowel. It's a common feature in Bengali speaking persons pronunciation of long and short vowels. Then I discuss the reasons here. You see, absence of monophthongs. These monophthongs are absent from Bangla language. For example, this one, it's similar to Bangla dirgo e, e. For example, I eat. But it's younger brother, this one. Many people think it resembles Bangla Roshui. But it's not Roshui. It's Roshui plus A divided by two. Mathematics. So its pronunciation is <laughs> So I don't like to eat it in this way. But we usually uh, don't differentiate between long and short vowels. Next, diphthongs. There are some uh, English has eight diphthongs, but here I have just uh, picked up number one, this diphthong A, and oh, these are not uh, pronounced by Bengali speaking persons as British or American people do. For example, Hey, hey, yeah, we get this diphthong, but it's usually pronounced like this one. Hey, just I was coming just uh, before an hour, I was coming and I saw a signboard State University of Bangladesh. I, uh, I had a look at a signboard State University. But in our way, it's state. And American people do the same thing. And here, another one, uh, the O, oh, it's actually British people say O, oh, but American people use a different diphthong O, oh, okay. uh, as in, you see, we Bengali speaking people usually say no, no. You can do it, no. But British people say no. You can't 
do it. So, but when will people pronounce it, usually pronounce in a different way, okay, it's not go. Then, so, we say so, so, just like uh, this, this diphthong becomes this monophthong. There is another one here, it, it, this one also becomes this one or this one. For example, it's grow, British people say, or American people say grow, but we usually say grow, grow. Then grow, we usually say grow. There is a grow, or you grow, okay? And no go, I already discussed. Now consonants. Here yeah, we have got two consonants, you see, fa, va. These are labiodental consonants. When we pronounce the consonants, fa or va, we have to make a contact between the upper front teeth and lower lip. But these are not available in Bangla language. So we make them by labials. For example, please switch on the pen. We say pen. The pen is moving. We say the pen is moving. But the British and American people say the fan is moving. Because fa and va are Levio dental sounds, but Bangla, Bangladesh people, Bengali speaking people make them by labials. Tha and tha, these are interdental sounds. When we pronounce tha or tha, we have to push the tongue cheek between the upper and lower front teeth. But these are not available in Bangla language. Our speech organs are trained for pronouncing tha, tha. It's somehow like a like an alveolar, tha. Tha in Bangla, tha in thala, tha in dolil, okay? But in English, when we pronounce tha, jihobar ogrobak ek to bheer hoye jabe. Dui purabani che dhater maach khan diye. Abon dui parsh diye to batash bheer hobe. Jabon thief, thief, 3033 thieves were thirsty on Thursday and throwing things on the theater in this way and we have to we have also also we have to tra train our our auditory organs auditory Bangladeshi people usually pronounce auditory auditory okay it's not wrong american people pronounce auditory okay we have to train our auditory organs. Otherwise, if I pronounce thief, you will hear thief. But auditory organs are my concern today. Then, ja. This sound isn't available in Bangla. It's a palatal alveolar sound. Ja. Ja. Or we find the sound in words like pleasure, pleasure, measure, leisure, Treasure, television, but usually Bangladeshi people say pleasure. It's my pleasure to spend my leisure with you, isn't it? Okay. Then this one, z, z, it's an alveolar sound, but sometimes we pronounce it like this one, tell to alveolar, z. For example, yesterday I visited a zoo. Zoo. Yesterday I visited a Jew. What's the difference? But we, for in both cases, we pronounce yesterday I visited a Jew. Okay. Then you see Ra. Bangladeshi people's English pronunciation is semi-rotic. Semi-rotic. Semi-rotic means 
sometimes uh, we don't pronounce R when it's in the end of a syllable or it's not followed by a vowel, and sometimes we pronounce. So, but British people never pronounce R if it's not followed by a vowel. For example, I am a teacher. But Bengali people, Bengali speaking people usually pronounce I am a teacher, like American people. But American people always pronounce R. Even without the existence of R, American people pronounce R. When two vowels are put adjacent, for example, Shah, Shah of Iran. Shah of Iran, they can pronounce. They will say Shah of Iran. Okay. That's why Bengali speaking people's pronunciation of art is Semirati. And here you see Bengali speaking people, uh, persons ignore or avoid aspiration of some uh, blossoms, pa, ta, ta. They are usually aspirated when they are in uh, in the initial position of stressed syllables. For example, P I N pin, but native speakers usually pronounce pin, pin. But we Bangladeshi speakers always pronounce pin. We avoid aspiration. Okay. I already told you Bangla is a syllable timed language and our speech organs are trained for speaking Bangla. But when we are speaking in English, Sometimes our mother tongue interfere, interferes in our English pronunciation. So we always put, when speaking in English, we always put equal time and stress on all syllables, which isn't right for English. And yeah, you see that. There are some, there are almost 50 strong weak form words in English. Here I have put some examples. E H E V is the strong pronunciation. It has two weak pronunciations. The and the. Okay. The is used before consonants and the is used before vowels. But we Bangladeshi people usually use the same form everywhere and that's neither strong nor weak okay and here you see uh in native speakers pronunciation these words are used with the weak forms in more than 90 percent cases but the opposite things happen to Bengali speaking speakers chunking when we are speaking, we speak a lot of phrases and clauses, long sentences. So we have to divide our speech into different parts. And the parts should be meaningful, but Bengali speaking speakers usually uh, can't usually divide their speech in accordance with meaningful units. For example, he said that he was sick. We usually speak in this way, but that should be with the second part because there are two clauses. Number one, independent clause, and number two, the adverbal clause. He said that he was sick. Native speakers speak in this way, but Bengali speaking speakers can't do that. Then, stress and stress timing about timing i have already how many minutes have i had can you help me five minutes 
Finished. Can you give me five minutes? Next and, uh, lunch break will be shorter. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Some uh, some new information might be uh, more delicious than lunch. What do you think? Okay. Just give me five minutes. So as I have already told you, we are not that much uh, aware of using stress on right syllables. Okay. For example. I am a professor in the department, 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 fifth syllables, the middle syllable receives the stress and the initial and final syllable are unstressed. But usually Bengali speaking, even uh, we teachers, English teachers can't always put stress on right syllables and it's a common feature in Bengali speaking person's pronunciation of English. Then, uh, I'm discussing some atypical, unusual features of Bengali uh, speaking, some Bengali speaking uh, speakers. Here, there is a saying, spelling often spoils English pronunciation. Okay. But many Bengali speaking speakers learn and use pronunciation of words according to spellings. Okay. For example, I have heard even yesterday, I was in a meeting and the chair pastor of the meeting was pronouncing uh, procedure. procedure and I was uh, I uttered three, four times procedure, but she was doing her job. Okay, so British people say procedure, American people say procedure, but some Bangladeshi people say procedure. We should avoid such pronunciation. Then American people say short. Are you sure? Bangladeshi people may think that I'm scolding or reproaching him her. Okay. But British people say, show. Can you go to cinema? Go to the cinema with me. Show. American people say, sure. But Bangladeshi people say, sure. It's unusual. Okay. It's not acceptable. S E W. See you. Many speakers say see you. Okay? But it's British and American pronunciation is like S O. So, so. Yeah. In this way, I have just put a number of words, not all the words of English language. You say Wednesday, some people say Wednesday. Okay? Uh, adjective, some people say adjective. Okay. Uh, adjustment, some people say adjustment, we should then re report, some people say report, these are atypical or untypical pronunciations, uh, we should avoid. Then over generalization, new, and many people think that other things will be similar, blue, blue, and blue. But this of our generalization isn't applicable to English pronunciation. B O M B versus bomb. C O M B. Home. And T O M B. Tomb. But if we say bomb, home, and tomb, and we some people. Say B U double L or C B U double L bull T U double L bull D U double L dull dull C U double L cal good and H U double L 
in the friends of the regional dialect or idiolect, personal dialect, idiolect, personal dialect. So, some people say, Cho, Sar, some people say, Chart. But I, I have an officer in my department. I mean, in the Department of English at Daniel University, he's from Chapai. He always addresses us with charge. Charge. I mean, what they are sorry, but we will not play in this department. I'm going to go ox for it. Okay, ox. Touch. Many people say, touch. Please don't touch me, mas. All right, touch. People say, many people say, has, mas, much, catch, yes. School, many educated people pronounce, is school. I am, a, I am a school, is school teacher, the is scholar, and is scratch. Huh? Or oh, sugar. Uh, I have some sugar problem, but we say I have no problem with sugar. I have some sugar problem. Okay. And mixing RP and American pronunciation, dance. British people say dance. American people say dance. Sample. British people say sample. American people say sample. But sometimes some speaker just make a mixture. Mixture isn't always good for health. Then arbitrariness. We get some speakers, they use their own emotion and patience. Ideology. But some we yesterday I heard a person pronouncing ideology. Neither American nor British people pronounce in this way. Then what is it? Canada. Okay. British people say harder. American people say country. But one of these people say Canada. There are two types of campuses Canada and university campus Canada. <laughs> you know. And this one, many people say legend. He is a legendary, He's a legend, and legendary expertise. Some people pronounce expertise. These are completely unacceptable. Mythology. Some people pronounce mythology. Not acceptable. And hopefully, finally, influence of Indian pronunciation. Okay? British people say attitude. American people say attitude, but Indian people say attitude, and we follow Indian people. We shouldn't. We should follow either RP or standard American pronunciation. The same thing happens to the other examples. Education. Okay. Indian people say education, and we sometimes follow. There are some recommendations, okay, discouraging individual or untypical pronunciation, encouraging typical pronunciation, okay? And there should be an authority in Bangladesh, I think, that will encourage and establish a variety, English variety for this land that will be Bangladeshi English, like Indian English or South African English. Thank you for your enthusiasm, patience, and interest. This is the end of my presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the next session is the highlight of the conference, uh, the keynote address starting at 2 p.m. by Professor Andy, uh, Andy Creek Patrick and Professor Emeritus, uh, Griffith University, Australia.
Before the keynote, now we will break for lunch and Juma prayers. Lunch is served outside the auditorium and our volunteers will guide you to the seating area. Prayer rooms are also available for female guests in room 602 and in room 515 for male guests. Uh, we will meet back here at 2 p.m. for the keynote address.